When I was asked by Teachers TV to teach a pair of maths masterclasses, I decided to tackle two topics that can be both tricky to teach and that students don't always see the wider point of. They're both topics that it's possible to have a lot of fun with, and I'm hoping that's what this group of Year 10 students from three North London schools will think too. What's the probability that your bus to school will be late tomorrow? What's the probability that David Beckham will walk into your life in the next five years? What's the probability that we'll have an earthquake tonight? What's the probability that I can juggle these three balls for ten seconds without dropping them? Count. One, two, three, four, five, I've been practicing. Six, Come on. Seven, Mum will be so proud. Oh. You know, life is a game of chance. And it's made up of a series of events that might either happen or they might not happen. What one thing is for sure is that we can use mathematics to help us make the right choices, to maximise our successes and to minimise failure. OK. Now then. Ooh, these look nice. I'd like a volunteer, please. A volunteer. Look at my lovely donuts. Mmm. Krishnan, up you come. Put your clipboard down. Excellent. OK. Choose one of my lovely, sugary, jammy donuts. Mmm. Look good. Do they smell nice? Ooh, it makes you want to lick your lips, doesn't it? Lovely. Well, Christian's going to eat this without licking his lips. I think you can do it. Definitely. Without licking the lips once? Yes. We've got to keep watching him. Who thinks it's likely that he's going to lick his lips? OK, I you like think that. it's likely. OK, then. After three, one, two, three, go for it. Watch him carefully. No licking. Watch him carefully. Oh, that sugar. Watch him carefully. <laughs> Watch him carefully. Oh, what's your name? Matthew. Oh, you come quick. Take a donut. OK. What I'd like you to do is face each other. Take your donut. Right, you eat your donut too, but you can lick your lips and oh, look okay. at him. Lick your lips. Go on. It's like eating him. Lick your lips. Make, put him off. Go on. Lick your lips as much as you can. <laughs> That's it. Oh, look at that tasty. Oh, look at those lips getting licked. Mm. Has he been practising? <laughs> Try and put him off. Mm. I think he's done really well. Give him a round of applause. You can lick your lips now. That is absolutely fantastic. Take a marshmallow. No, take a handful. Go on. Is it nice? It's lovely. OK, well done. Marshmallows. Excellent. OK. Fantastic. That is actually a fantastic performance. Now, is it true that one person's actions there, OK, well, two people, because I was involved as well, was putting him off? We were licking our lips and trying to put him off. We were trying to increase the probability, weren't we, that he would lick his lips. We were influencing the probability, and therefore his chances weren't independent anymore. We were affecting, we were trying to affect his probability. Now, in life, there are things where we don't have such an influence, where we do have events that are truly independent. Coin tossing. Put your clipboards down. Come up and get a coin from me, a 50p coin. Up you come. I'd like you to choose a coin and find a space. We're going to do a bit of tossing. Choose one of my coins. Dahlia, excellent. We've all got a coin, everybody. Yeah. Right, what we're going to do after three is toss our coin, flip it up in the air, catch it on our hand. Try not to drop it and have a look at what you get. OK, if you get ahead, you've lost. I want you to take your coin and yourself and sit back down. If you get a tail, you can stay up because tails never fails. OK, after three. One, two, three, toss. Catch. OK, what have we got? Heads, sit down. Tails, stay up. What have you got? Heads, sit down and look That's a tail. Oh, yeah, it is. Of course it is. Tails. <laughs> Tails stay up. OK, Tails, gather round. Gather round. How have we got now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. OK, we've got eight people sat down. OK, toss two after three. Same rules apply. The second toss. We're going to toss again. One, two, three, toss. Tails never fails. If you get ahead, oh, sit down. Yes. Be honest, sit down. OK, that's two tosses. <laughs> OK, let's everybody face the audience, face the audience. Lovely, we have five contestants left. OK, toss three. One, two, 
three, toss. Flipping head. Oh, Get it? Flip. Yes. Tail. You've stayed in. Any heads? Sit down. Unlucky. Three tosses. Good try. No, you can keep it. You can keep it. The fourth toss. The fourth toss. One, two, three, toss. Tails. Tails never fails. How many have we tossed so far? Four. We've got four tails in a row. Wow. We could have a winner here. Toss five. One, two, three, toss. Leave it, let's see. I've got a tail squad one. Tail again. Five in a row. Do you think that's likely? No. no. Right, let's try for six in a row. Okay, one, two, three, toss. Toss six. Tails. 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 Wow. Are you sure these coins are fair? Right, toss seven. One, two, three, toss. Good flip now. Head unlucky. Tails, we are the winner. Congratulations. I tell you what, that was pretty terrific, OK? Seven tosses in a row. Does anyone know what the probability of getting seven tails in a row is? How are we going to work it out? OK, we're having a think. What do you think, Arnold? You do half times half. You do a half times a half? So a half seven. times a half, isn't that a quarter? No, to seven times. Right, why do you do a half times a half seven times? To get the probability of it. OK, right, you've got exactly the right idea. The first toss, let's break this down, the first toss is a half chance of getting a tail or a head, isn't it? So we write down the probability of getting a tail, one tail in a row, one tail in a row, is... Well, there's two equal likely outcomes, heads or tails. This looks like a tree diagram. OK. The second toss, of course, gives us four equally likely outcomes. There's only one outcome that we want. Telltale. OK, don't be a telltale. Right. The next toss, that's the third toss, gives us how many equally likely ones? Shout it out. Eight. Eight equally likely outcomes and so on. So a half times a half times a half and keep timesing by a half. Each time we're going to double our outcomes. Seven in a row is a half to the power seven. Who's worked that out? Half to power seven. One over. Who said that? Edward. One over 128. That is quite amazing. You lucky person. One over 128. Where are you again, the lucky person? Where are you? Adam, it was amazing. Are you still stunned? Yeah. Cool <laughs> you still got your coin? Put it in your pocket. Give it a magic rub. OK, let's try eight in a row. Go on. OK. Go for it. A really good flip. Head. Head. Unlucky. <laughs> I thought you were on a winning streak as well. Right then, on the eighth yeah. toss, on the eighth toss, what was the chance of him getting a tail on that one toss? One in 200, yeah. No, on that one toss. Oh, a half. half. OK, because we've had an independent event followed by an independent event followed by another independent event and so on. Past history does not influence it. OK, seven in a row is a half to the power of seven. OK, what's the probability of getting n tails in a row? I'll start you off. A half. Mummy, no? Half to the power of n. Half to the power of n. Excellent. So eight tails, in, eight tails in a row. When n equals eight, what's the probability? Shout it out. One over. Eight. Uh, okay, let's calculate it, okay? A half to the power of eight is one over 256. 256. Good. A half to the power of eight. Okay, I'll do the one over bit. A half to the power of nine. One over. Quick, mental skills. 512. Good. A half to the power of ten. One over. 1024. I wonder what the probability is that I'll get all those coins back off you, eh? <laughs> uh, right then, let's move on to another interesting, very familiar situation. Here's a dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many equally likely outcomes on that dice, Meg? Okay. What's the probability that you throw a one? One sec. Throw it. Are you feeling lucky? Not really. Woo! <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness! It's a one. Well done, Meg. It was one six chance, you lucky person. OK. Right, then, that's interesting. What's the probability that... Just hold it there for a minute. If Meg throws it twice in a row, 
she gets two ones. From the beginning again. 136. Good. So the probability she gets a one on her next go, of course, is 16. But she's already got the one. So let's do another one. Would it be a 136 chance? It's not going to happen again, is it? Oh, oh, unlucky. But the probability of getting a one followed by a one is 136. That is because, of course, we have 16 times 16, which is 1 over 36. 36 different ways that that dice can land, OK, when I throw it twice. Let's take two dice. What's the probability that I get a double one? One on one throw. Why? Okay. Because they're independent. So it doesn't matter if you do after each other. Exactly. All together, simultaneously. One over 36. Fantastic. What's the probability of getting uh, a double six? One over 36. OK. More interesting question then, because you're a bit clever, yeah? What's the probability of getting a total score of seven? Mm, that's quite a lot, because quite the different numbers make up seven. What make up seven then? Come on. Um, do you want to write them up? Two and five. Krishnan, do it. And write them on the board, yeah? Give you a fresh piece. The different numbers that make up seven. I love that. Krishnan got that just right. One and six. That's one way. Two and five. Is he right? Three plus four. Is that it? Yeah. So there's three ways, yep. Yeah. So the probability... Yep, yeah, that's brilliant. Three out of 36. Everyone happy? Yeah. yeah. Good, because I'm not. I'm not. Oh, no. oh. Anton, why aren't you happy? Um, because it's not, not simplified. Well, that's good, actually. Yeah, it would simplify to a 12, but mm. that's not the reason. Uh, OK, let's look at it. A 1... Do it the other way around. A 1 and a 6, yeah. OK, you could get a 1 on that dice, a 6 on that, but you could also get, and this is another outcome, a 6 on that and a 1 on that. OK, two different ways that give you the total of 7 using 6 and 1. So, actually, the probability is... Yes. OK. Which is, in fact, 1 over 6. What's more likely, getting a total score of 7 with two dice or throwing a 4 with 1? Same. Same. Equal. 1 sixth. Excellent. OK. And very interestingly, 7 is the most popular total. It's the most likely out of all the totals. And yet, key question, if I throw these two dice, am I likely to get a seven, even though it's the most likely? Am I actually likely to get it? No. Depends what you classify likely as. OK, all right, well, likely is more than half chance. <laughs> That's exactly what likely is. It's more than a half chance. Is it more than a half chance that I'm going to get a total of seven? No. no. It's not. So it's not going to happen. Never mind. Oh, it would have been nice if it did, yeah? But we can still say that seven is the most likely score. Interesting. Do you know what the probability is, Edward, of winning the jackpot on the National Lottery with one line of numbers, one line of six numbers? It's like one over a billion. Something. One over a billion, that's interesting. A billion to one. Yeah, anyone else? Does it you think depend it's... on how many people are playing? Does it what, sorry? Does it depend on how many people are playing? Right, well, that's a very good, interesting response there. Does it depend on how many people are playing? Your payout depends on the number of winners, doesn't it? But forget the winners for the moment. Good point, and we'll come back to that. What's the probability that with one line of numbers, you get the six numbers and you are a winner? OK, well, we'll look at working that out and we'll have a little think about it. We must remember your question too. What we're going to do is have one, two, three, you four, please, up here. Thank you very much. OK, could the rest of you come all up to the front and get yourselves into a circle with your backs inwards. Six hands, six balls. Fantastic. OK, what we've got is the National Lottery here. All right, now then, we've got 49 balls inside that machine. Six of them are red. And 43 are black. Six of them are winners. 43 aren't winners. I want all six reds to come out, all of them, in a row, and then I've won the lottery. And I've got my picker in here who is blindfolded, he can't see a thing. Now, I don't want you to help him. I just want him to scrabble about in the balls. In a moment or two, he'll be scrabbling about in the balls and throwing balls out at random. I wonder if he's going to get six in a row. Hey, hey good luck! They'll need it. 
Let's start! Good try. I can see it. It's out. That's good. Oh. Ball three's coming out. Yeah, chuck it. Good. Ball four. Quick, 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 machine. Yeah, we're doing really well. Go, we're doing really well. Come on. Six reds, five. Brilliant, oh! Brilliant! We've done it! Do you want to know how many you got, Mikhail? Hi. None. <laughs> oh, never mind. Take your blindfold off, Mikhail. We've got six blacks. We don't know what numbers they are. We do know that they are six of the balls that we didn't want. So we've lost. We haven't got even one number. All right, we wanted six in a row. Is it going to happen? Yes. Is it going to happen? It could do. What's the probability? That we're going to get red, 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 and red. Difficult, isn't it? It's the probability of winning the national lottery. Let's have a look. Chuck those balls back at him. Go on. Chuck him in. Right then. Ball collectors back on your stage. Okay, this time, what I'd like to do is stay in your circle and without leasing the balls, can you all turn around 180 degrees and actually face Mikhail? Let's. Go through a simulation, but this time we're going to do the winning simulation. Goodness me, what's the chance, OK, randomly, that the first ball coming out is actually red? One over 49. But there's six of them, isn't there? There's six. Six out of 49. Are you sure? The chance of getting the first ball is six out of 49. Good. OK. Right, second ball. What's the chance? Five out of 48. Five out of 14, not eight. eight. Why? Because you just took <laughs> OK, the number of reds is reduced, the total number of balls has been reduced, and so on. Third one, tell you what, chuck it at them instead. There you go, Meg. Next probability, hang on a minute. Ball three, shout at me. Four out of 47. OK, just a minute, just a minute. Four out of 47. I'm getting old, yeah, I can't keep up with you. Fourth ball is... Three out of yeah, 46. 46, excellent. There's only two left in there. <coughs> Chuck it. Two out of? 45. Last one. The last one to come out. There's only one red left. And how many are left in here? 44. Four. 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 Excellent. Well done. Six out of six. Round of applause. <laughs> Imagine if that had happened, eh? Well, here we have it. We have the probability here of winning the National Lottery. It's easy, OK? We multiply the numerators together and we multiply the denominators together. So it's easy. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 times 45 times 44. Simplify that down. We do actually get a fraction. 1 over 13,983,816. Wow! 14 million to 1. That's amazing, isn't it, eh? Yeah. Would you believe it? Do you think you'll ever win it? Maybe. Maybe. If you keep playing every week, you might win it. In fact, Yasmin, if you played it every week, do you know what? You would eventually win. Really? After about 269,000 years. So good luck. All the best. 269,000 years. I'll see you then and we can share your jackpot. Brilliant. Of course, you won't be winning it because you're not old enough to play yet. So, very interesting. So whichever line we put on, so that's six numbers chosen at random, whether it's a lucky dip or whether it's the numbers, I don't know, Mickey, one, two, three, four, five, six, OK, has a probability of 14 million to one. 14 million to one chance that we're going to win the jackpot. So, shall we, Mickey, shall we put the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six? Or shall we put on, ooh, Alex, shall we put on a lucky dip? What do you think's better? What's got the best chance? Lucky dip or one, two, three, four, five, six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Pardon? One, two, three, four, five, six. You think it's more likely you're going to win with one, two, three, four, five, six. Who agrees with her? Oh, what do you think, Delia? Um, lucky dip. You think the lucky dip? Why? Uh, it's just like numbers at random. It's numbers at random. But one, two, three, four, five, six is any six numbers too. All right, they're in a bit of a pattern, but they're random numbers. I think they've got the same probability. You think they've got the same probability. What's that then? Just one out of 13,983,816. OK. The probability that you win on any line of six numbers, whether it's nice consecutive numbers, whether it's a lucky dip, OK, whether it's my age, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, who knows? OK. 
But we do know that the probability of winning the National Lottery is 14 million to 1. However, coming back to your point, does it matter then? Is it better to do 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 or a lucky dip? Well, what do you think? What did you say earlier? Um, I said we didn't know rely on other people's choice of numbers Totally well. rely. So if you were lucky enough to win the lottery, imagine it, £5 million jackpot, OK? And Alex, yeah, you've put on a lucky dip and you're the only winner. You've just won £5 million! Pounds. Round of applause! <laughs> OK. And the week after, would you believe it? £14 million to one chance. Do you know what numbers came up the week after? One, two... Three, four, five, six. You've just won the jackpot too. Five million pounds. Well done. Yeah. And she can share it with 10,000 other winners. Because 10,000 people every week put on the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> so once it's all shared out, she's a lottery jackpot winner and you've just won 500 quid. OK? Book yourself uh, for a week in Southampton. That'd be nice, yeah? Watch the seagulls. Lovely. <laughs> Now, let's play a game where you can win a car. Welcome to Probability, your chance to beat the odds. Now, here's your host, Johnny Healy. Can we have our first contestant? Come on down. Now then, we're going to play a guessing game. Here's your guesser. Guess with my gold flower. What we've got? We've got three boxes. Inside one of the box is a car! <laughs> Inside the other two boxes, we've got Brussels sprouts. Ooh. Go for it. Place your flower on the box you think the car's in. OK, take your time, OK. Are you happy with that choice? Yeah. OK. I can tell you that if you'd chosen this box, you would have won... Sprouts! Yeah. Yeah. yeah! What do you want to do? Do you want to stick with your first guess? Or would you like to swap? We've narrowed it down to two. What would you like to do? Stick. You want to stick? Why do you want to stick? Random Does it matter? Guess. Is it gone? Random guess. Random guess. You want to stick. You fancy sticking. OK, what would you do, Addo? Stick. You'd stick. Yeah, I thought you might, actually. What would you like to do, Alex? I'd swap. Would you swap? Why? I know. I like the other one. You like the other box? Yeah. Anyone else who'd like to swap? OK, why? Because you have a higher chance of winning a car if you swap. You have a higher chance of winning the car if you swap, but there's only two boxes, so surely it's either in this box or it's in that box. Put your hands up. Let's have a little vote. Who would like to stick? Go on, put your hand up if you really want to stick. Eleven stickers. OK, hands up for swap. That should be the other eight of you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight swappers. Interesting, more people want to stick. Right, you said you wanted to stick. The audience want to agree with you, don't they? Yeah. So, are you going to stick? Yeah. OK, he's chosen to stick. Is that your final answer? Yeah. Your final, final answer. Do you think he's doing the right thing? Yeah! yeah. Is he going to win? Yeah! Yes. OK, we can now reveal that the middle box that you chose to stick with is... Yeah. Sprouts! Yeah. Oh! Let's have a look at what you could have won. The car. Have a look at that. Touch it. Just for a moment or two. You haven't won it. OK. Unlock it. He could have won the car. If only he'd swapped. Now we can start using maths. Because your man's on the right tracks. There are two boxes there. But what you're saying really is that you don't think it's 50-50, do you? No. OK. Even though there's just two boxes? Yeah. You're saying that these aren't equally likely, aren't you? Yeah. OK. Now then, put your hand up if you said stick. Stick. All 11 of you thought that is the best option. And I can't blame you. There's two boxes left, OK? Two boxes. Now, 
It could be in either of these boxes. So you're thinking, well, it might be in that one or that one. 50-50, half. I'll stick with it. Brilliant. What about the swappers? Well, whether you guessed or not, swapping is the best strategy. Let's prove it. When he chooses a middle box, what's the probability that he's right on his first guess? One, one out of three. Remember that. It's always going to be one out of three. Yeah? I can't control which box he's going to choose. He could pick it one out of three. What I can control is the other two boxes. OK. I know that I can get rid of one of these boxes. The probability that it's in this middle box is one third. The probability that it's in one of these two is what? In one of these two is two thirds. But I've effectively got rid of that and told you the answer that it's not in that. So it must be in that. The probability that it's in one of these two is two thirds, but it's not in that. What's the probability it's in this one? Two thirds. Still two thirds. It was either in this one or that one. I've told you it's not in this, so I've given you extra information without you realising it, OK? And now I've influenced the probability. It's counterintuitive, but believe it or not, some of you are still thinking, well, I think it's half. I think it's half. Who thinks it's half still? Ooh, be honest, some of you are not convinced. When I first saw this problem, nor was I. And in fact, it's a very famous problem. Eminent mathematicians, when this was first circulated, were actually writing papers saying it was all a load of rubbish, that this is all a fix. But if we played it 300 times, we'd win 200 times by swapping. Every time, we'd only lose 100. We can make the odds work for us. So that's the probability experiment. Unlucky this time, Mummy Nur, but well done. Give the man a round of applause. Well done. Yeah, take some sprouts. Go for it. So that's what it's all about. Life is a game of chance. Life is a game of probability, but we've got to make the right choices. Let the maths work out the probabilities for us so that we can make the best chances. Maximise success. I'm Johnny Healy. Thank you very much. Yeah.